Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Mom's Chicken and Noodles. Well, in honor of Mother's Day and all you moms out there, today I'm sharing with you a dish that I've been eating for about as long as I can remember. It's my mom's chicken and noodles, and it's pretty much the epitome of comfort food for me. Now, we're not talking about chicken noodle soup here. We're talking about homemade hand-rolled egg noodles cooked in a broth with shredded chicken to practically a gravy consistency, and then she typically serves it over mashed potatoes. It's a dish that's near and dear to my heart, so I'm excited to share it with you guys today. So I've seen my mom make this with cooked chicken, even with leftover Thanksgiving turkey, uh, but most often she will cook chicken thighs in the broth to help flavor that broth. Today we're gonna kinda do a combination of the two. So we've got a whole chicken here, about a four and a half pounder. We're preparing it spatchcock style just by cutting right alongside the backbone here. And we're gonna roast our spatchcock chicken on the smoker. And then in the meantime, we're gonna take this backbone right here, along with some mirepoix and some aromatics and create a quick little chicken broth or chicken stock while our chicken is cooking. So cleaning this up here, I'm just gonna trim down the ribs, try to make this as easy as possible to take apart when it's done cooking. Just get rid of this bone here. All right, so we're just gonna clean this up real quick here. Getting rid of some of that excess skin. That stuff we're not gonna eat anyway. Get rid of this bone that's attached over here. And then we flip this over, press that breast flat. Now everything's on that same level so it can cook evenly. We're gonna expose all the flesh here so that we can season that up. We'll put it back before we cook it. Be careful not to tear the skin just to kind of expose all the meat. And then we'll go ahead and get this seasoned up with some Cattleman's Grill California Tri-Tip. This is a great savory rub. And it has the word tri-tip in the name, but it's great on chicken, pork, steak, all of the above veggies. Man, I love putting this on some asparagus. But the point here is you got savory flavors. We're gonna create a lot of these same flavors in our broth between like onion, get some salt, got some pepper. These are all things that we're trying to fortify flavor-wise. Now the skin is not gonna play much of a part in what we're doing today, so feel free to skip seasoning that. We're just gonna try to get it all over the flesh. All right, so that bird is gonna be ready to go onto the grill. As I mentioned before, we've got these extra parts here. I might just go ahead and cut that in half. We'll throw that into our little Staub Dutch oven along with the rest of those rib bits. And then we've just got some mirepoix. So we got your onion, get your carrot, your celery. You can throw just about whatever you've got in the fridge into this pot. Got some parsley stem here, a little bit of thyme, and then we're gonna hit it with some of the Telecherry black peppercorns. This I'm just gonna cover with cool water. I'm gonna go throw it on the stove top and we'll let it simmer very gently over the next hour or so while our chicken cooks. Today we'll be cooking on the Yoder Smokers YS640S pellet grill. We're gonna roast this chicken at 325 degrees using hickory pellets. Throw it right here on the second rack. I'm gonna find myself a probe and we'll get into the breast where we want 155 degree finishing temperature. Now we're gonna go ahead and make our egg noodles. And in the timeline of things, this is something you wanna do first. So, I've actually got another batch that's ready to go that I made this morning. They need at least two hours just to dry out, to kind of firm up once you've rolled them. So go ahead and do this early in the morning for dinner that night or even the day before, uh, or you can always just do it two hours before you're ready to start cooking. So we're gonna start with two cups of all-purpose flour. I'm gonna add to that one teaspoon of kosher salt. And then I'm gonna kinda of create a little well right here in the middle where we're gonna add a quarter cup of milk and two eggs. And then 
we'll just kind of start whisking this with the fork and slowly incorporating the flour right around it. And then when you get to the point where you can't really stir that with the fork anymore, it's time to get your hands dirty. Just start getting in there, working it by hand, pressing that together, incorporating the flour into the wet mixture. And then once most of that flour is worked in there, you can go ahead and turn it out onto your work surface and just knead this by hand. So you can see how this is really starting to contract after I push it. That's that gluten working. So what I want to do at this point is I'm going to kind of roll it out into an even shape. Honestly, it doesn't have to be super even. These don't have to be pretty. They're comfort food. Call them artisan if you like. It's what we call ugly stuff, right? Artisan. I'm going to cut this in half. And then I'm going to let these pieces rest for about 20 minutes before we roll them out thin. All right, so we've just rested these under a wet cloth here to keep them from drying out just yet. I'm going to make sure that we get plenty of flour down on the surface. And we're going to roll these out pretty thin, about an eighth of an inch thick. Mom always says to keep plenty of flour on there to keep it from sticking, but also it's going to help it kind of dry out after we're done rolling these. And then that flour combined with the liquid that it's cooked in kind of helps to create that gravy situation I was talking about earlier. All right, so I got that one about where I want it. I'm going to let that rest while I do the same thing to this second piece. All right, so now that we've got these rolled out, we're going to roll them up, kind of like you would with a cinnamon roll or something like that. This is just to make the cutting a little bit easier. All right. And then we'll get these side by side. We're just going to cut them, oh, I'd say between like a quarter and a half inch thick because they're going to expand a lot as they cook. And then, like I said, these need to dry out before we cook them. So at this point, we're just going to unravel every single one of these, laying them out flat in a single layer without overlapping. It'll lay out on the table for at least a couple hours to dry out, just covered with dry towels. Well, our chicken's been on for about an hour now. We've reached our target internal temperature. We're right between 155 and 160 in the breast, so we're ready to pull this thing off the grill. Well, the noodles are dried out, they're ready to go, the chicken's done cooking, and the chicken stock is ready to strain so that we can get to cooking our noodles. So chicken stock's just gonna go through the strainer. I'm not gonna worry about cheesecloth today. Any of those little extra bits of flavor are all right with me. Looks like we got about a quart out of that. I'm gonna guess I need two to three more quarts for cooking these noodles, but this is what we'll start with. So we're gonna add our chicken stock to our five quart Dutch oven. We'll get the noodles in there and then we'll just add water to cover initially if we need to and then continue to add water as it thickens while it cooks this is all just kind of done by sight and by feel here you can see how much more rigid these noodles have become during that drying time so we're going to bring this up to a simmer pretty well covered now we'll add just a little bit of water I'll bring that up to the simmer all right, mom says that the water in the broth should have been boiling when I put the noodles in, so my bad. Listen to your mom. All right, while those noodles are go going, we're going to take this chicken apart, shred up the meat. The skin we don't really need for this recipe. We're just going to be using the meat of the chicken. What we do want to keep is all of these juices in the bottom of this pan though. 
those are going to go in with the noodles here in a little bit. Do we need some more water in here, Mom? Yeah. Keep the water level up, keep scraping the bottom. Guys, this is my mom. Uh, this is her recipe and she's cooked it way more times than me, so she's here helping me out with it today. We've been going about 20, 25 minutes here on the noodles, just adding water as we need to. Say here in about five minutes or so, according to what mom thinks, we're gonna throw our chicken in. Do you wanna stir it while I add it in? Sure. All right, so we're gonna take all of those juices that cooked with the chicken. Make sure we get those in there as well. I think my chicken and noodles has more chicken than mom's. Yeah. We're just gonna add chicken until we can't add chicken anymore. Ooh, yummy. So what, what's next, mom? Uh, salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. But we better taste since you got seasoning on your right. meat. Get yeah. a noodle. Let me get a noodle. Oh, need salt, need pepper. For sure. A little bit of pepper. This way? Yep. I got it chunky. All right, so now that chicken's gonna kind of start breaking down. Our broth gonna thicken up a little bit. Yeah. Should I add some flour in here? Oh, I think it'll, I think it'll thicken on its own. All right, let's let it go. Is this more than you normally cook at a time or do you cook this much at a time? I cook more. I uh, I usually have the recipe times three, but I don't put that much chicken in either. I think I'm going to from now on. All right, so we went about, what, like half an hour just noodles. I think it's been another probably 20 or 30 minutes with the chicken in there. Uh, it's thickened up, starting mm -hmm. to look about right. So we're gonna give it one more taste test. See if we need to adjust anything. Oh, that's good. I like where it's at. Yeah. All right, let's dish it up. Do this mom style with some mashed potatoes on the bottom. Got all that good meat. Heavy on the chicken. Mm-hmm. I always like a little extra pepper on mine. Of course, you know I always reach for the hot sauce too. Get that good juice. I like the little vinegar bite. Mm. <laughs> All right, let's see how we did. Okay. Ma'am. Mm. You did great, Mom. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. That's great. Very good. I love it. I'm glad that we've been eating this for so long because it's <laughs> like, this is my comfort food. Yeah. Very good. Well, thanks for coming on today. You're welcome. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. <laughs> love you. I love you. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.